Oh, hey, just the person I was looking for. I need you to settle a debate for me. See, me and my assistant Richard, we've been doing a Pokemon Soul Link together. It's a cooperative challenge run thing, doesn't matter. Anyway, Richard has been complaining non-stop about the fact that he has to keep a Smeargle on his team so that I can have a Tyranitar. I mean, just non-stop yapping in my ear about this freaking painter. You'd think I was forcing him to drink a glass of rat urine or something. And I told him, hey, I've had an unknown on my team for the last four gyms so that you can have your Giratina. It's a useless goddamn letter J. That's way worse, but, but he won't hear it. But you agree with me, right? Richard, he's crazy. Oh, oh wait, I'm uh, I'm talking to a camera right now. You can't actually respond, right? Right. Well, if that's the case, then it looks like I'm gonna have to take care of this myself. You've been asking for it for a while now, so I suppose it's finally time. Today, I'm figuring out which Pokemon is statistically the weakest. Richard, hit that bro for the last time. Smeargles got sketched. In case this is your first time watching one of my videos like this, what we're gonna do is use a method called a decision matrix to statistically rank a bunch of Pokemon based on objective numeric criteria, and then do some fun math wizardry to figure out which one ranks at the bottom of the barrel. This method allows us to take into account a whole bunch of factors, not just base stat total, but it also involves a lot of math and data collection. So to make my life a little bit easier, I'm not going to rank all 1,015 Pokemon today. I'm going to cull this list down a bunch. First of all, we are only going to be looking at fully evolved Pokemon today. After all, as Shigeru Miyamoto famously said, a bad, unevolved Pokemon is eventually good. Unless it evolves into something bad, in which case, uh, yeah, yeah, you're just f Additionally, since we're only interested in finding the weakest Pokemon today, I'm not going to include any Pokemon with a base stat total over 400. That leaves us with these 18 Pokemon, the contenders for the absolute dregs of the Pokemon world. Every single thing on this list is utter garbage, and I wouldn't blame you for wanting to punt one of them out of a window on sight. So, now that we have our list of contenders, we can begin the decision matrix process. It comes in three steps. First, we need to choose our criteria, or basically just all the things that we want to judge these Pokemon on. Then, we need to standardize these criteria, which just means that we need to make it so they're all scored on a scale from 1 to 10, it just makes them easier to compare. And lastly, we need to select a weight for each criterion. A weight is basically just a percentage that represents how important each criterion is. Any kid who's looked at the syllabus to see how much tests are worth so you can spend like 45 minutes figuring out exactly what you need to get on the final exam in order to still pass the class knows exactly what I'm talking about. If we take each standardized criterion, multiply it by its given weight, and then add them all up, we'll get a score out of 10 for every Pokemon on the list. Whoever has the lowest score is officially, statistically, the worst Pokemon. So let's kick things off with our first criteria. Base stat total. It is the total of all of a Pokemon's base stats. You can find it with a quick Google search. I don't got a whole lot of interesting stuff to say about this one. When it comes to stats though, any true Pokemon aficionado knows that it's not about the size of your BST, it's about how you use it. So our next criterion is all about stat distribution. There are a ton of different roles that a Pokemon could fulfill depending on where its stats are allocated, but when dealing with Pokemon that don't have a lot of stats to work with, you want it to fall into one of two camps. You either want a Pokemon that has I'm here for a good time, not a long time, written in their Twitter bio, aka something with a lot of speed and attack or special attack at the cost of defenses and HP, so it can hopefully go first and kill something before it has a chance to hit them back. 
And on the other side, if a Pokemon is not particularly fast, then you better hope it has enough HP and defense or special defense to take a hit before dishing one out itself. In order to quantify this, I created four subcategories to determine how good a Pokemon would be at each of these roles. So, for example, I added each Pokemon's base speed and base attack together to get a physical sweeper score, HP and defense for a physical bulk score, and then the same thing for the special stats. Then I looked at which of these four scores was the highest for each Pokemon and took that to be their roll score. Basically, Pokemon are rewarded for having their stats distributed efficiently, allowing them to excel in a given area instead of having points thrown around into stats that they may never use. Kind of like how you're constantly stocking up on potions in every RPG, even though you have no intention of ever using them. <laughs> but you gotta do it anyway. Our next two criteria have to do with types. From a defensive perspective, a Pokemon's type determines its resistances and weaknesses. Any attack that a Pokemon is weak to does two times as much damage, and any type that it resists does half as much. So if we write out a Pokemon's resistances like so, with 0.5 denoting not very effective and 2 denoting super effective and just 1 being neutral, then you can add them all together to get a resistance score. A lower score score here means that you are resistant to more things than you are weak to, which is... is good. I do want to throw in one caveat here, and that's Ditto. In its base form, Ditto is a normal type, but Ditto is rarely in its base form. Nine times out of ten, it's transformed into whatever it's fighting. So for Ditto's resistances, I decided to assume that it was simply the same type as the opponent it was facing, and then calculated the resistances that way. But let's be honest, sometimes in life, it isn't about how hard you can get hit. It's about how hard you can hit. Types don't only determine resistances, it also determines which moves you get the same type attack bonus on. So for the next criteria, I entered each Pokemon's stab types into this tool from the Pokemon database, and it told me how many Pokemon it could hit super effective with those types. Abilities are always a bit tricky to rank because there isn't any simple number associated with them. So this time I decided to do a pretty simple method. If they have access to an ability that is actively transformative in a good way, something like Intimidate or Imposter, then they get a point. If they have an ability that is actively harmful, like Stall, they get minus one point. Anything else is zero. Also, any ability that affects immunities like Levitate or Wonder Guard, that was already accounted for in the resistance score, so to avoid double counting, they were given a zero as well. I know, I know I could have gone into more depth with some complicated tier system like I did in the past, but I, I just really didn't want to. And not to get ahead of myself, but most of these sucky guys don't have access to anything interesting anyway, so I didn't do it. And last but not least, we come to moves. A Pokemon can have an amazing stat spread, massive type coverage, and a killer ability, but if they get nothing but hidden power, a move which has a whopping 60 base power, Richard, and they don't even tell you what type it's gonna be, you gotta freaking reverse engineer the thing yourself to figure out what it's good against or track down one random NPC for hidden I ended up splitting the moves category into three separate criteria. One for level up moves, one for TMs, and one for moves gained by other means. Things like move tutors, egg moves, things like that. For each one, I looked at how many stab moves it could get, how many coverage moves of 80 base power or above, and how many status moves that are generally pretty good. Anything that applies a status condition, boosts a stat by two stages or two stats by one stage, things of that nature. I also only looked at attacks that matched the Pokemon's primary attacking stat or both if they are a mixed attacker. And as a side note for all of you saying that I should totally do the same thing with every Pokemon to find the strongest, this part took freaking forever and was 
boring as hell for 18 Pokemon. I ain't doing it for over a thousand. You can't make me. That's... That's probably not true. I'm very susceptible to peer pressure. Though this was mostly pretty straightforward to figure out, I did want to point out Ditto and Smeargle, who technically can gain access to any move. When Ditto transforms, it gains the moveset of whatever Pokemon it's facing. And though Smeargle doesn't learn any real attacks, it does gain access to the move Sketch every 10 levels, which allows Smeargle to permanently learn the most recent move used by the target. So if you plan it right, Smeargle can actually learn any move in the game. Now, as Richard won't let me forget, this can be easier said than done. In a regular playthrough, you may not know when you're gonna run into a Pokemon with a move that you want. Smeargle's pretty slow, so you might have to cross your fingers that you don't accidentally sketch Sweet Scent or something. And when sketching a move, it requires the target to first use that move. And looking at Smeargle's base stats, you really don't want it to be hit by anything too good. I mean, that's not my problem. So, as a compromise, I gave Ditto and Smeargle both 100 points in this category. Most Pokemon got one or two at the most, so this is a huge bonus. However, when we get to the weight, I'll weight these three criteria basically in order of how much of a pain they are to get. So, level up moves are weighted the highest, you're pretty much guaranteed to get the ones you want eventually, TMs are slightly lower because you gotta track them down, and then these other moves will be weighted very low. So you can stop complaining, Richard. I, oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo, I gotta put in a little bit of work to get the moves I want. But I guess you wouldn't know a whole lot about putting in work, would you? And with that, we have all of our criteria selected and the data filled in. This next step is pretty quick. We just need to standardize everything so it's on a scale from one to 10 with 10 being the best. To do this, I'm gonna be using this formula for any criteria where a higher score is better, like with base stats, and this formula if a lower score is better, like with resistances. This will make it so the best score in a given criterion is 10 and everything else is scaled down from there. And last but not least, we need our weights. After some deliberation, I settled on these percentages for the weights, with base stat total as the highest and other moves as the lowest. The important part here is that all the percentages add up to 100% in the end, because that's what a percentage, that's what it do. And with that, we are just about ready. All we need to do is take each standardized score, multiply it by its weight, and add them together to get a score out of 10 for every Pokemon. Whichever one has the lowest score is statistically the worst Pokemon in the game. Richard, Richard, would you, uh, would you mind uh, just stepping outside for a second? I think I, I think I hear the pizza guy or something. All right, yeah, is he gone? <gasps> All right, guys, I have a confession. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm right and Unknown is the worst Pokemon. I mean, it's got crap base stats and it only gets one good move if you're lucky. Uh, but technically, looking at the numbers, Smeargle does have a lower base stat total and it gets zero real moves by level up. Um, also, Normal is just a worse type than Psychic, no matter how you slice it. I, I don't think that'll add up to enough to tip Smeargle over the edge as the worst, but, but I don't know if I can handle that sort of shame if it does. You guys don't see Richard. You don't know the smug freaking look he gets when I'm wrong. It's like, he's like, like, oh, it's terrible. But, but if he's right about this, then you and I both will literally never hear the end of it. So, so if he's right, I'm just pulling the plug on this whole thing. I'm deleting the video. I'm deleting the channel. I'll change my name to Steven or something and move to Kentucky where he'll never find me. Uh, I know that sounds extreme, but uh, that might not even be enough. He, he, oh, 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 crap. He's back. Uh, oh, oh, no, no pizza guy. Oh, no, uh, weird, weird. Must have been something else. Well, uh, I don't know. I guess we just uh, pack things up here and head home for the... Oh, oh, oh uh, yeah, 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 the results. Yeah, I can, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll crunch those numbers real quick. I'll, I'll announce a bit. We'll end the video, and I'll just. It'll be nice and simple, easy. As... Stop, let me go. Let me go. I'm going to. 
Fine. Fine. I'll do it. Whew. Folks, the results are in. The data has been entered and the numbers have been crunched. And we have finally arrived at the truth. I'm proud to announce that the Pokemon that is statistically the weakest is... Oh no! Let's go take that and shove it, Richard, you smug bastard! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, but Sketch, oh, but the base stats, I don't want to hear any of that, Mr. Second Blaze skill issue. That's what I, that's what I say, right, all right? Unknown, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a damn letter, it's literally useless. You don't even know what type its useless move is. Hey, hey but you know what, you know what, if my unknown, if, if my unknown was a letter L, then it'd be getting boosted experience, because that sh** belongs to you, my friend. Oh, you know, hey, you know what, you know what, I guess if I got 14 unknowns, then I could spell out fuck you Richard in the PC so maybe they're not all that bad <gasps> victory